<laughs> I mean, talk for so long, I, I can't walk on the stage without carrying books with me. <laughs> but I have nowhere to put them except on the symbols, so I don't know. How symbolic. <laughs> several times. Is there anybody who has also met Kenneth Rexroth at some time or, uh, or other? It's right. Yeah. It's good. It's good stuff. Very, very good. Very good. Um, I had dinner with his um, son-in-law, who will speak in a moment, who never met him, but who <laughs> knows a lot about him. <clears throat> and we'll talk for uh, a few moments uh, about the personal side of, uh, of Rex Rock. Um, I think the best way for me to introduce him is um, autobiographically. I grew up in Columbus, Ohio, and there was um, an interesting uh, coffee shop, 1950s, 1958 and 59. Uh, and, um, I used to go there when I got uh, interested in uh, both uh, poetry and jazz, more or less simultaneously, and uh, listen to um, a group, a trio like this one, play while uh, a man named uh, John Vaccaro uh, read. Uh, Vaccaro uh, subsequently went to um, New York and founded the Theater of the Ridiculous. Uh, which was one of the great uh, avant-garde uh, theater groups of that period, which in fact uh, a few years after that performed at, uh, at Notre Dame. Um, I had some friends who had a uh, amateurish uh, but enthusiastic uh, <laughs> jazz band, and uh, after uh, going to this coffee shop a few times, we thought we could do it too. So, um, what was filtering through from the uh, West Coast at that period uh, mainly was the work of uh, two people playing with uh, various bands. One of them was uh, Rex Roth and the other was uh, Lawrence uh, Farrell and Getty, then mainly known as a bookshop owner, uh, so he likes books. Uh, he was an uh, immigrant uh, publisher of uh, Howl and uh, many other famous and uh, infamous uh, books or booklets of uh, that period. And so we tried to do the same sort of thing that uh, we thought uh, uh, they did. And we read some, uh, some Farrell and Getty and we uh, read some, uh, some Rex Roth and we thought we were very cool. <laughs> We were about 17. <laughs> uh, what I didn't know in 1958 and 59 was that uh, Rex Roth had been doing this since the 1920s in Chicago when he left uh, Elkhart and moved to Chicago at the age of 16 as an absolutely um, independent uh, person and uh, hung out with the whole range of Chicago personalities of that period, from the very rich to the very poor, um, hung out with uh, jazz types, uh, co-owned a well-known uh, coffee shop, uh, was in and out of school, uh, went to the uh, Art Institute for a while, and was primarily interested in uh, painting during that period, though he wrote uh, at an age younger than uh, Rambo, uh, several long poems that uh, he didn't publish for 20 years, which then became uh, very famous, and everybody thought that the 40-year-old uh, you know, uh, Rex Roth had written these poems, but in fact it was the 16-year-old uh, uh, Rex Roth who had uh, written those poems. So I didn't know that part of it. I thought this was an old uh, 50s and uh, 60s phenomenon that we were getting, but it, it, it went back to, uh, to, to the 20s, at least in, uh, in Chicago. 
Uh, eventually, uh, I managed uh, to get out to uh, Stanford University, and uh, that's where I met Rex Roth for the first time after a couple of readings in uh, San Francisco, and uh, was a classmate of one uh, well-known poet, uh, Robert Hass, who is in many respects uh, a Rex Roth uh, disciple, and uh, Gary Snyder, who is uh, another one, and most of the uh, beat poets of, of that period, uh, all of whom as, as artists are, in my view, much inferior to, uh, to Rex Roth, who was uh, not all that much older than he was, though Robert Duncan used to always refer to him to his annoyance as uh, Daddy Rex Roth. <laughs> um, so that was uh, the second uh, uh, connection. My uh, professor at Stanford was uh, Ivor Winters, the most uh, reactionary uh, of all uh, 20th century critics and, uh, and poets, uh, who absolutely uh, loathed what uh, he called them the, the Kenneths. Uh, there was a Kenneth Patchen uh, living uh, nearby who was a friend of uh, Kenneth Rexroth. He would ride in class uh, the Kenneths. But it's extremely interesting to discover that um, uh, Rexroth wrote uh, five poems to uh, Ivor Winters, and their correspondence is mutually um, complimentary that went on for many years. <coughs> Uh, in secret and certainly without leaders uh, telling us in the classroom <laughs> anything about it. So Bob Pass and I in my generation of Stanford poets were going back and forth from this uh, very reactionary formless context at Stanford to this wide open sort of media influence and Rex Roth influence scene in San Francisco where once again we went to a couple of, uh, of poetry and, and jazz bands. Uh, time passes again and um, I end up in, uh, in South Bend, Indiana, and I haven't uh, thought about uh, Rex Roth for a long time. And two books were published at about that time. One of them was the collected shorter poems published by New Directions in 1966, and the other one was the longer poems published in New Directions in 19. 68. We came in 1967, right in the middle of the publication of those two volumes, both of which I bought at a small independent downtown South Bend bookstore. Would there were some more of those? <laughs> Anybody interested in starting a small How about over here? Okay, oh, okay, okay, right. <laughs> and uh, read them and uh, uh, loved them. And uh, a few years after that, lo and behold, uh, Rex Roth turns up at the Notre Dame Sophomore uh, Literary Festival where he gives a, uh, uh, a reading and where we have a reception for him at our house on uh, Lafayette, uh, which exists no more, but is around the corner from our present house, which is two houses down from where the platform is. <coughs> And uh, talking to him, uh, he said uh, he thought possibly that our house was his birth house. And I said that it's coincidental indeed. Uh, <laughs> you, you know, all of these houses look alike in this uh, part of town. Um, why don't we go walk out in the neighborhoods? We walked down Park Avenue. And he realized that, yes, indeed, all, all the houses in that part of town did look pretty much alike, <laughs> all built within 10 years of, uh, of, of each other. And uh, shrugged his uh, shoulders and said, uh, you know, oh, oh, well, it was, it was one of them. <laughs> Enter Linda DeChico. When she was writing her book about the history of the sophomore uh, literary festival, she picked up on that. Uh, anecdote and absolutely wouldn't let go of it. <laughs> and uh, we talked from time to time as she did the necessary research to identify the, uh, the house and the rest is history. She did identify the house, she got the plaque put up, 
she knows more about Kenneth Rexroth than I do, certainly, and probably anybody else uh, sitting here. And um, she ought to be speaking, but since she's not speaking, we ought to applaud once again because this is a terrible. Thank you. 